Good afternoon. Um, I want to begin by thanking Governor Edwards for the uh, invitation to be here this afternoon. It's a real honor to, to be part of this program. I'm a uh, pediatric infectious disease specialist by training. I have practiced pediatric infectious diseases for more than 35 years. I've worked all over the world. I have studied pandemics and worked with epidemic and pandemic diseases for my entire career. And I have to tell you that I, I am as worried about our children today as I have ever been. This virus, the Delta variant of COVID, is every infectious disease specialist and epidemiologist's worst nightmare. I don't think as Americans in our lifetimes we have ever seen an organism that possesses the dual characteristics of the contagiousness that this virus has, together with the virulence, its ability to produce disease. As the governor mentioned, there was a myth that circulated during the first year of the epidemic that children somehow were immune. I think there was there were people who said children don't get the disease, they can't transmit the disease. We know that those were fallacies all along, but particularly now that the Delta variant has emerged, it has become very clear that children are being heavily impacted by this organism and by this pandemic at this point, uh, perhaps more than ever before. Hospitals across the state are being inundated with seriously ill COVID patients, as you have heard, and the children's hospitals are no exceptions. When a child is seriously ill or has a complex medical condition, there are only a handful of places they can go to get the treatment that they need to survive in some cases. And those places are the designated children's hospitals that have the requisite specialists and the equipment and the expertise to manage those conditions. At this point in time, to the best of my knowledge, every children's facility in the state is absolutely full. I know that at Children's Hospital New Orleans, we have not had an empty bed in any of our intensive care units for weeks. We have avoided going on some kind of diversion or drive-by status because of the responsibility we feel to take care of every child who needs us. But COVID has put a serious, a very serious strain on our ability to do that. We have had a census as high as 20 patients admitted on any given day with COVID. That doesn't sound like a lot of patients, but to put it a little bit in context, throughout the entirety of the pandemic, back to its very beginning, the greatest number of patients ever in hospital on any given day prior to this time was seven. So we're t at two and a half times that total today. And we've had four and five and six patients at a time in our pediatric intensive care unit. And those patients require incredible intensity of care from the nurses and the pharmacists and the social workers and the doctors. And so there's a tremendous amount of work involved in taking care of the sickest of the children with COVID. There was also a myth that children, if they did get ill at all, would only get ill if they had some kind of underlying or predisposing condition. But half of the children that we're seeing today were perfectly healthy children who have been infected with COVID and then required admission to the hospital or to the intensive care unit. We test for COVID on, in a drive-by program at the hospital as well as through our emergency department and outpatient clinics. And the positivity rate on those tests is currently between 15 to 20% on a daily basis. So we know that the children that we're seeing in the hospital are just the tip of the iceberg. As the governor mentioned, there are many others that are out in the community with milder symptoms, and they are potentially spreading the infection to their playmates or to their cousins or to their parents or grandparents. The number of healthcare staff out ill with COVID has increased on a daily basis, and this has added strain to our ability to deliver care at Children's Hospital New Orleans. As has been mentioned several times, staffing is rate limiting at this point in time, not the number of beds, not the equipment, not the, pre not the existence of ventilators, but staffing. And uh, ever increasing numbers of our staff have become COVID positive and are on isolation. 
In short, we've learned that the Delta variant of COVID is a whole different animal from what we've dealt with in the past. And as I mentioned, really an infectious disease expert's worst nightmare. Vaccination clearly is the answer to the question of how we ultimately get out of this. The low rate of vaccination here in Louisiana means that we are very susceptible to a truly devastating surge at this point in time. But ultimately, if we can encourage people to get vaccinated, and maybe by learning that their children are susceptible to this disease and can suffer severe illness or even death, maybe we can encourage more adults to do the right thing, the moral thing, to take a vaccine to protect their children, even if they aren't concerned personally about protecting their own health. In the meantime, uh, we are not powerless against COVID, as has been mentioned. We have the tools at our disposal. We've learned so much about masking and distancing over the past year and a half. And honestly, um, standing to the side here as the governor made his announcement today, I have to tell you, I felt like I'd been thrown a lifeline. I, I, it was a very emotional moment for me to know that though school will be opening, we will have tools to keep kids safe and out of the hospital. I can tell you at Children's Hospital in New Orleans, we've all been dreading the opening of schools because we just feel that that will be a catalyst for more and more cases, more and more suffering, and potentially more deaths. And so I feel that this order, Governor, is, is really a lifeline to families and to children who want to stay safe and to healthcare providers across the state. So how do we protect our children today? We do it in the familiar ways, uh, through distancing, through uh, good hand hygiene, and through masking up. And we encourage all adults who are eligible to get vaccinated as soon as possible. And we encourage parents to have those discussions with their children who are over 12 years of age and they also are eligible for vaccination and should get a vaccine. Finally, just one more word uh, before I leave the podium, and that is I wanted to mention that in a very short period of time, we're going to be talking about influenza. And this is another scenario that uh, just keeps me awake at night, the thought of having a dual COVID-19 and influenza epidemic. We are very likely to have a very ugly year where influenza is concerned. Last year was a very light year, probably the lightest year for influenza on record. This one is likely to be very heavy. And that will put a lot of kids into the hospital. It will further strain the system. And if you stop to think about uncontrolled Delta variant COVID-19 and uncontrolled influenza occurring simultaneously, that's a formula for um, really uh, causing the children's facilities across the state uh, to reach their limit and to not be able to deliver care to other children who need them. So again, thank you, Governor, for the opportunity to be here, and, and uh, I'll turn over the podium at this point.